What's up guys, Mike Builds. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be more of a vlog style video. I'm just gonna kind of show off my 48 volt system, my 12 volt system, the solar panels, the things I use to power those things. And that's really it. But first I wanna talk about something I've been getting a lot of questions about. So a lot of people have been interested in how you connect normal non-smart batteries to the EG4 smart batteries to an EG4 inverter. And I'm gonna explain to you guys the way I did it. That way y'all at home kind of have an idea on what's going on and how this full system works because I have been getting a lot of questions about that and I want you guys to try to understand my thought process. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. I'm just gonna show you guys how I've done it and it's been working for me. All right, so in a previous video, in fact, it's the last video I just uploaded, we went ahead and combined four of these 12 volt, 280 amp hour batteries to make a 40 volt battery to tie into my solar power system. The way these are connected is in series. So we have a main positive right here, the main negative right here, negative to positive, negative to positive over there, and then back to that one. So these are one big battery and these go through a fuse to a Anderson power pool. So this Anderson power pool has these four gauge wires that go up to some bus bars, which are these bus bars right here. And these are my main battery bus bars that these server rack batteries connect to, as well as those batteries. So everything on this bus bar will share voltage. And then from there that we have two, two gauge wires going from the bus bars through a current shunt into the inverter itself. And all the data from the current shunt is displayed on this meter. So this is power going in and out of the batteries. That way we know when we're charging and when we're discharging. And I will put a link to this because every video I use this on, I have people ask about it. And the way the EG4 batteries are connected is the same thing. There's wires, they each go from here, they run back into the battery bus bars to connect with the other batteries. So as long as the voltages of your two batteries are equal or close enough, power will equalize between the batteries. All right guys, I'm actually recording this after I just finished recording some of the video footage you guys just watched. But basically the one thing I forgot to mention is if you're gonna have separate batteries, different kind of batteries connected to each other. I do believe it's very important to be able to monitor each bank of your batteries. So for example, these EG4 LL, each battery has its own display that displays its percentage as well as the voltage of each individual cell. And for your main batteries like these, it doesn't have any sort of fancy screen or anything. These do have Bluetooth BMS, so you can go in and individually check cell voltages if you want. What I did is I install a current shunt that way, all I have to do is glance at that screen and I know exactly how the state of charge of these batteries are because I did set this up with the state of charge according to these with their capacity and everything. And all that data goes through this little shunt here and is displayed on the screen. So this is the best way to keep track of that. I would highly recommend you do that for each battery you have connected in parallel. That way you know what each battery is at. So if this battery is drifting too far apart from our server rack batteries, for example, then we know Either maybe we have too high resistance some of the cabling or we just need to maybe recharge these separate from these. What I have personally found is these do kind of stay around the same state of charge. They do drift apart a little bit, mainly because lithium ion phosphate has such a flat charge and discharge curve. You really don't get a ton of voltage difference until you get to the end of the state of charge or the beginning of the state of charge. For me, I try to charge these as much as possible every single day with solar, and that seems to help them stay equalized relatively good but just something to keep in mind and I would highly recommend you guys do that on your system. That way you can know if you have any issues and know that everything is kind of staying equal. As far as these communicating, these do have an ethernet cable that communicate directly with the inverter. So the inverter only talks to one of the two batteries because I don't even have these two connected. That way when this battery basically reaches 100% state of charge, the inverter sees that and can kind of control charging, discharging functions and things like that. But in my experience, when this battery is 100% charged, the system is more or less 100% charged. What can happen is if the voltage doesn't get high enough, you may not fully charge your non-smart batteries. So that is something you do have to keep in mind. That is kind of a, I guess the only con I could think of. But to me, that's not really a big deal because I do cycle this thing pretty regularly. So as the voltage goes up and down, the state of charges will somewhat follow each other. Every now and again, I just have to make sure I do a full 100% charge and I will not have any issues. The second thing I want to address is I had a lot of people commenting on the video about these batteries that these do not have a high current cutoff. And that is true. If you guys saw Will Prowse's video on that, as well as my own video, when I tried to test these, I was not able to get the high current cutoff to work. In my opinion, I think they do that because if it comes on too early or too quickly, I think people will have more issues but it is a safety concern that these do not have a high current cutoff. So all you have to do to mitigate the safety risk and the issues with that is put a fuse on the output. So right here we have 
just a 250 amp mega fuse, nothing crazy. They're about 25 bucks on Amazon. And this particular fuse holder seems to be of good quality. And as long as you have a good quality fuse, all your conductors are good quality, you should not have a problem. And just make sure you fuse it for the current you're going to need. Personally, I would not pull more than 300 amps out of one of these batteries by itself, or if you have them in series, not more than 300 amps in the series circuit. If you parallel the batteries up together and have thick enough conductors, you can definitely pull more than that, but I would not advise you do that just for safety and longevity of the batteries. So that's all you have to do to mitigate that because I had a lot of people worried about that. Price point of these batteries, the reason I went with these is because it is one of the cheapest ways to get a bunch of capacity. As far as how long these are gonna last, I have no idea. Some people were concerned about that, some people were not. It's just one of those things, risk versus reward. I would rather take the risk on the cheaper batteries because I have a mix of cheap and expensive and I can always fall back on my expensive batteries. I will say the expensive server rack batteries are worth the money. There's a lot more safety built into this. It's UL listed, it has built-in fire suppression. It has a lot more safety features that you're not going to get with those. But lithium iron phosphate chemistry as a whole is very safe. So I personally am not worried about that. I mean, I've been running these batteries for years now and I've never had an issue. As long as you take care of them, be smart about your setups. I don't think you'll ever have an issue. But that's it guys. I just kind of want to do address that with you guys. I was having a lot of questions about it and I hope that clears up some of the muck as far as how to connect the batteries and as well as how to be safe using non-smart batteries with your smart batteries. If there's anything you guys want to add to this in the comments, just let me know and I will try to put it in a future video. But now I'm gonna go over my whole solar power system, kind of give you guys an overview of the panels, how it's all connected and wired, and give you guys an idea on how I personally use it in my day-to-day -day activities. All right guys, here we are in the backyard. To start off the tour of my system, we have this solar pergola, and there's a whole separate video on this I will include in the description if you wanna see how we built this. This is made out of 10 Canadian solar, 380 watt panels. So we have on paper 3,800 watts of output, but the best I've seen this during the summer is about 3,500 watts in full sun. These are all wired in series because the inverter can take up to 500 volt input. And with all these connected in series, we get about 380 volts DC. So they're all just wired up in series. I do need to still clean up some of the wiring. I put caulking between all the panels in order to create a watertight seal. That way this doesn't get rain underneath here. And for the most part, it does a pretty good job. Don't mind my backyard, it is messy. Voltage then comes down to this disconnect switch. This is a breaker, DC rated. So that way I can cut the power to this if I need to. And it goes through this conduit and it goes into the house through this waterproof little grommet window thing I've built. The solar then comes in here and goes into the inverter. And that's where we get to use the power. And as you can see right now, I'll show you how much we're making. We're making 2.54 kilowatts, so 2,500 watts. That's pretty good. It's a winter day. We're not getting sun directly on the panels. It's kind of at a crazy angle. And that's it. So once the power goes under there, it's used for our loads. It also charges the batteries. So we're not running a bunch of loads on the inverter right now. As you can see, most of that power is going directly into the batteries. We're getting almost 2000 watts straight into the batteries. The inverter we're using is a EG4 6000 XP. This is one of their better flagship, I would say cheaper budget inverters. These are about $1,400. It is a high frequency split phase inverter. So you can power whole house loads if you want. You can power pretty much anything up to 6000 watts or 3000 watts per leg. As far as battery storage, we have two EG4 LLV2 server rack batteries. Each of these batteries is rated at 5.12 kilowatt hours. They can each do 100 amps continuous. I've never gotten anywhere near that as far as pushing this thing. And then on the bottom there, we have four of the EcoWorthy 12 volt, 280 amp hour batteries in series like we just talked about. So this whole system has a capacity of about 24 kilowatt hours. And for what I found using this for a few months now, and in fact, I just did that upgrade, this seems to be about enough for me. Future goals with this is I do wanna get a bigger inverter and able to be able to run my entire house. I have actually ran my house off this using a generator connection. And the only thing that seems to bog it down is my water heater because the water heater by itself pulls about 5,000 watts. And I don't wanna be on the razor's edge of the limits on this in case something else kicks on in my house. The power from the inverter flows out into this plug here. We have a big four prong 240 plug here. And we have another gangway of plugs, four gangway plugs here. I did do a full build video on this. So if that's something you're interested in, I will put that in the end of this video and you guys can go check that out. As far as what I use my solar personally for, I mainly use it to run my air purifier. This is on 24 seven, as well as one mini split there, one mini split in the corner, and as well as another mini split in my bedroom. So I'm gonna go outside and show you guys the units there. But basically those three mini splits take care of all my heating and cooling needs. And it's 100% powered off the sun, off the solar energy that we store in this cart. The inverter does all the work for that. And honestly running three mini splits and that really isn't much on this inverter. 
So there's one of our mini splits. Here's the one in the bedroom. And here's the first one we ever installed. And I have videos on all of these on the channel. I will link all that. Okay, so that whole system I just showed you guys, that's the 48 volt system. Now I'm gonna show you guys my 12 volt system and I'm gonna explain what I use it for and the equipment involved in that. So first we start here at the solar tracker. The tracker is currently off right now, but this uses six 100 watt solar panels from Harbor Freight. I did a full video on us building this, so I will include that as well if you wanna go check that out. But we have some solar panel wiring that goes into the house through the window, just like the other one. So the Harbor Freight solar tracker unit comes in on this condo right here, and it goes to this charge controller right here. As far as a 12 volt charge controller, this is definitely one of my favorites. It's rated for, I believe, a thousand watts. So as you can see right now, we're producing 428 watts. That's actually pretty good. That charge controller pushes power to this set of bus bars right here. So that's our main power distribution bus bars. And then from there, we got wiring that goes down to a big prismatic cell life po pack. That's a 400 amp hour battery right there. We have another 230 amp hour battery here. We have 150 amp hour battery here. And then we have five 100 amp hour batteries here. These are all wired in parallel. This system right here is kind of temporary. That's why it looks like this. This is not ideal, but I wanted to get some use out of these batteries because they were just kind of sitting. A lot of these batteries I've tested and reviewed. So if you want to check out videos on each individual battery, check those out on my channel. But I reviewed almost all the batteries in this pile. So a 12 volt system is good for, I would say anything under a thousand watts, only because your amperage goes really crazy high on the DC side when you start pulling a ton of power. So what I do with this system is as the system charges up, we're storing power and there's a good amount of capacity here. All right, so what I normally do is I have this EG4 charge verter. What I'll do is I'll connect this EG4 charge verter to the Sun Gold power and low frequency inverter. This is a big 3000 watt, heavy, heavy, low frequency inverter, very durable, very good for running inductive loads and things like that. I plug the charge verter into that and I literally push power from the 12 volt system into our 48 volt system where we use the power. So all the power I generate on all the batteries gets used in some way or another. This system can also be used to run whatever I want on its own, but because I like running this system more because it's more powerful and it runs, it's already connected to all the mini splits and everything, I try to just push power from these batteries to that battery. So in a way we're getting use of all the capacity into this thing as much as I can. Another good thing about the charge verter is you can use it for backup power through a generator. So if we lose power completely, like if we get another big snowstorm or something like that, I can use this with a generator to keep the 48 volt system charged. Then I can run my heat pumps and anything else I really want to run. But that's really it guys. That can kind of, that kind of concludes the tour. Like I said, this is more of a vlog style video. I just really wanted to show off the system. This is what we're up to thus far. This is years and years and years of researching and building and saving up and buying stuff little by little because this stuff is very expensive. However, what we have here now is very capable. And like I said before, I can absolutely run my house on this. It's been very reliable. There is some things I wanna clean up. I think I wanna slowly build a way better enclosure for the 12 volt setup. I wanna clean up some of the wiring on the 48 volt power system and just things like that. I just wanna to continue to improve. And that's kind of the whole point of this channel is to show those improvements to you guys at home to help motivate you guys, give y'all ideas. And also y'all do give me good feedback. I appreciate all that. So that's it. I'm gonna end the video right here. Let me know what you guys think of the video. If you guys have any more questions, please let me know. And we'll see y'all in the next one.